Joe, thanks for joining me. Of course, just days away from Callum Smith's fight against Canelo Alvarez. Now, earlier this year, it looked like the fight was gone, at least temporary, at least in the mean, uh, the short while when Billy Joe Saunders almost signed to fight Canelo. When did talks sort of start to resume again after the pandemic? Um, I think there was a... At the time, obviously, that thing um, fell apart. I think they were, they were a day away from going over and announcing it with Billy Joe and uh, Canelo. Um, and then, obviously, we've seen um, Canelo then was saying that he wanted to fight this year, but then he was having some trouble with the zone or Golden Boy and there was all that lit- litigation. So we decided about getting on with our things ourselves, drew up a short list, looked about fighting either this weekend or the other weekend so that, that we've got pencil on December the 19th. There was whispers and, and rumours that obviously Calla Plant's name was mentioned and Cam Smith's name was mentioned. Um, Cam was in, in, in the gym training and then obviously when that thing sorted itself out with Golden Boy in the zone with Canelo, um, the name was in the mix. But even on the morning when Canelo said he was making his announcement that day, we all WhatsApp phoned each other and gone, well, it can't be us because we've not signed nothing. And uh, we had to literally watch it to see that it was us and the name Cam Smith came out of, it, out of his mouth. So, um, yeah, obviously, uh, fight's on now and what, eight days away, something like that. I know Canelo, of course, is a, is a huge superstar, but Callum Smith is a world champion. Does it feel a little bit, not maybe disrespectful, that you're sort of having to keep chasing this fight when, you know, Callum's got the belt and he's the established super middleweight world champion? Yeah, I think it is, but it was very much... I've referenced this like Ricky Hatton v Mayweather. Ricky Hatton was world champion at the time, but Mayweather was the pound for pound king. Difference in this two fight, Ricky had a crowd and <laughs> Callum Smith and well, a bit of a crowd, but it would have been better to have had like 60, 70,000 over here, half of Liverpool over here. And yeah, to touch on, it is a little bit frustrating, but he is the golden ticket in boxing. He is what everyone sees as the number one pound for pound. Callum Smith could easily have fought James DeGale um, but decided uh, not to. One, the money wasn't no good, and decided to go in the World Boxing Super Series because that's where the the, the, the big fights were: Eubank Jr., George Groves, uh, Jurgen Bremer. There was good fighters in that tournament, and that's where the belts were. So Cam's always wanted the challenge, and then after he's won the belt, he's always tried to get unification fights, and it's happened for you know. And I know there's politics and networks and promoters and advisors, so it's been very hard, but. You can't look at a gift horse in the mouth and when there's uh, this opportunity arises to fight Canelo and test yourself against the best of the world and that's all he wants to do is test himself against the best in the world. He's the world champ, the ring champ at 168. He wants to go and test himself against a pound for pound number one fighter in the world and um, that's, that's what he, he wants to do and we're just uh, ready to, to go and do it now. I know Canelo's been moving up and up and down the weights but has, has Callum had his eye on this fight for quite a long time or is it just sort of a recent thing that he started to think would be a possibility? No, I, th- I think when Canelo first mentioned uh, Callum Smith as a potential opponent was just before he fought Hassan Nadam in New York, Canelo had fought and then he mentioned Callum Smith as a possible opponent. Um, Callum then fought in New York, he got beaten Nadam and then it went all quiet again. And then I think Canelo only mentioned Callum then after the John Ryder performance. So sometimes... <laughs> And not a great performance can get you the big fight, funny enough, sometimes. Um, yeah, but Canelo, he's been up and down the weight division. Great great fighter, really good fighter. And the more you study him, the more you see how the little things he does that makes him an exceptional fighter. And Callum Smith, Callum Smith isn't a fighter that has to beat his chest and shout from the rooftops how good he is and flip tables. Callum's just a, a, a quiet kid, a very humble kid. Um you wouldn't think he was a world champion. He just quiet, goes about his business, and and that's the way he is. And I think, like I said, Canelo is quite similar. Usyk, Lemachenko, a new way. I said this to Eddie Hearn and Adam Smith months ago. They don't flip tables, and they're pound for pound best fighters in the world. Why do we have to flip tables? Or Callum's a bit quiet. Why? That that's who he is, and he, he, he reminds me a little bit of. Lennox Lewis at the time in the fact that Lennox was just dead unassuming, went in there and it's only when his career ended you look back and realise how good Lennox Lewis really was. He, just because he wouldn't trash talk or do anything and wouldn't really do what media wanted him to do, he, he, he just 
went in there and did a, he let his fist do the talking, and that's what Calm Smith's like, really. You're right, and, and there's, I mean, I guess with Canelo, he's English as well, so there's there's not going to be any back and forth, but fights like this don't, shouldn't need it. I mean, if if you're a boxing fan and you don't tune into the fight or you're not looking forward to it, then questions have to be asked because it's, you know, to get a fight of this magnitude at the end of the year uh, really came together quite quickly. Everyone should just be just be happy it's happening. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I keep saying in other interviews, says full credit to Callum Smith, uh, for taking the fight, when you see the e press conference and you see Canelo says, "Yeah, I've been training for four months with Callum Smith," I thought, "Yeah, bet you have." And that's what I've been saying all along to Callum. I said, "No one is going to give you twelve weeks' notice because that'll be the best Callum Smith." But we have to stay in the gym and be ready. We have to be old school. So when the fight was done and announced, four and a half street stroke five weeks away, that's four weeks training. We, we were we were in a decent place and. Fair play to him for taking it. He could easily have said no. Um, I'll, like others are saying, oh, I'll wait till there's a crowd or I'll wait till there's more money or wait. He's like, no, I'll take it. So full credit to Cam Smith for taking it. It's a huge opportunity. And um, he's got to go in there and give it the, the best that he's can. And I believe uh, the Cam Smith that I've known all along um, turns up on the night. And um, I know people say shot the world, it won't be shot the world for me. And I think it'd be quite easy for journalists after the event to go, do you know what? The writing was on the wall. He struggled against, came from behind against Noel Kovalev. He had two hard wars against an aging middleweight. He struggled with Jacobs, who just struggled to beat Rosada. He beat Kovalev, who, let's have it, Yade did a better job on Kovalev than Canelo, although he lost. And Yade just beat to Arthur. So you just got to, you. everyone can get involved in a huge aura. Although I do feel this is going to be the best Canelo for a while. He's out there to prove a point. He's, it's a challenge for him. He's an adrenaline junkie. You see him with the fast cars and wild horses. He's, um, he likes to challenge himself, Canelo. And um, I've said it before, I hope Callum Smith turns up at the night. The truck thing with Canelo, he always turns up. He's not had a bad night at the office, has a Canelo? So... Maybe this once he could decide not to turn up for once. <laughs> of course, you've seen him as close as anyone four years ago with Liam Smith. Did you learn anything on that night that you maybe didn't know about him before? Yeah, like I said, <clears throat> watching a, a fighter on video and uh, on television, um, on YouTube, is totally different to seeing her in the flesh and preparing for Liam for that fight. We didn't have the best preparation, but going up against Canelo, fight week with Canelo, Weighing with Canelo, being in the ring with Canelo, the officials, you learn so much. You can't buy that experience. It's very much going for a driving test and you don't know what to expect. You do know second time round and that's what it is and being in there and for having someone been in against Canelo who's felt his shots, felt his power, knows his IQ, sees what he was trying to do, the traps he was setting for you. Yeah, you can't beat that um, information but the, the difference between Carmelima Two start different styles of fighters. One's five ten, the six three. Two different weight divisions. So, I think um, yeah, it's a different set of skills, uh, different game plan. And um, like I say when you look at Canelo's resume, tall fighters are bread and butter for him. You just got to look at the way that he handled Chavez. Came from behind Kovalev. What he did to Rocky Fielding. So tall fighters, it's like the bigger the target, the better for Canelo. So we've got to be aware of that and. Um, yeah, that, that, that experience, uh, we can't buy it. And, and, we, and we have used that in, in training camp and we will do five weeks now. Do you think the eight pounds heavier he is now uh, compared to against Liam uh, is good for him, bad for him, or does it not make too much difference? Canelo? I think Canelo's... Uh, I'll have to see him. I think it, when I watch his fight with Liam, he still looks like a, a baby. He's now 30 years of age and like Callum, both fighters are in the prime. Canelo of late has always fought people that are a little bit more older than him. I think this is probably the one of the best live opponents he's fought in a long time. He was in his prime, in his peak. Um, I think the time both get in the ring will both be similar weight. I said to you when Liam weighed in with Canelo, we thought, wow, Liam looks a bigger man here. Got in the ring the next night and it looks like someone put a pump to Canelo, the Michelin man who's double the size. So, um, yeah, he, he makes weight. Um, it's funny to see him in saunas and sweatsuits this far out. Surely he can't be struggling, but it's their way of doing things. But on the night, I, I think weight-wise, I think they'll both be, be very similar. You mentioned you've had four or five weeks since the announcement. How much of that time is spent 
specifically training for Canelo and how much is just spent training for a fight? Um, Callum was training for a fight for a while. Canelo, we've always talked about in the past and studied and watched. And for these four weeks training, because the last week you do nothing, you don't, you don't do the sparring and other things. So um, the four weeks we've been right on it. Canelo tried to get the, the best sparring partners we could that we could get. And you've got to remember sparring partners that I might have brought in from America and Europe and Germany. We couldn't do now because of this lockdown. So... You're doing a camp with one hand behind your back. So the pool of talent is now a hot tub of talent from what we could pick from. And we've had to pick three or four kids to come in and replicate certain things because we can't get someone to replicate Canelo, but certain things that Canelo does well. And you're in for that round, you're in for that round to do the best that we can do. But um, I'm sure for Canelo as well, he's got a bigger pool of talent to choose from over there. Um, but it's can't make excuses. It is what it is, and um, we've got to go in and give the best of it. The flip side of it, by only having short notice, four or five weeks notice, we haven't had ten weeks of media interviews, ten weeks of people going on and flying here and flying there. And sometimes for a fighter, I've seen it in the past with certain fighters, come fight week, they're mentally and emotionally drained and shattered. Not so much from the training, but from this, from this whether it be Sky, Frank, uh, BT, the zone, in, can we film this? Can we film that? Right, we want you to film your walking past Liverpool Pier. We want you to do this. Can we take a picture, film me at home? Can we do this? It's so tiring when you just want to train and go home. Mentally, doing interviews, different interviews and being asked the same questions, that can mentally drain a fighter. So I feel the upside of it, he hasn't had that. It's been short, it's been intent. And where there would have been hundreds of interviews, well, well, I'm sure it's done over 100 by now, but it's not on the huge scale like that where it's not oh, grand. Where just where you feel like pressing a, a play button on a record cassette and just answering the same questions again and again. So I feel that side of it, it'll, it'll be, won't be drained from, which is huge for a fighter come fight week. You want them to switch off and relax, not talk about it. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, obviously, I'm one of those people asking all the questions, but no, I, I sympathise because there's only so many questions you can ask and there are only so many answers that the boxers uh, can give and, and no one gets into boxing to be, a, to be a TV star or to be an interview star, right? They get in there to, to do I don't the know, though, mate. I don't know, mate. There's a few of them out there at the moment. The egos have landed. <laughs> that's, that's true, but they're, they're not in the, uh, in, in the big fights, thankfully, yeah. for now. Sure. And just finally... Callum did come in for a bit of criticism against John Ryder. I know you didn't necessarily share that, but have you noticed, given the magnitude of this fight, any difference in him in the build-up mentally? I think, um, I know it was criticism, but it's like, I can't say how there was criticism. He won the fight. All three judges scored it the same by one round. 116, 112, twice, 117, 11. There were bigger and better scores than when he fought uh, Billy Joe and Rocky Field in there were closer fights. And it's like, he's an easy person to hit Callum because he isn't on social media, he isn't outspoken, he doesn't kick back. So it's easy to have a go at him. Um, so that was that. And for, for, for this fight, I'm not saying Callum didn't underprepare or apply himself in training. He did do for John Ryder. But as Ricky Hatton says, you're training and you're fighting. There's a big difference training and fighting for an opponent and the same way training and fighting if it's Costa to Zoo. If you remember, he said you run that bit quicker, you hit that bit harder. It's huge. You know the magnitude of it. There's a risk you've got to get beat on the world stage in front of thousands, millions. And that's with Callum. Callum's locked on. There's a huge weight off his shoulders. It's nice and relaxed. He's chilled. This has been shown in like 200 different countries, is it, or something like that on the zone. So he knows the eyes of the world are watching on him. And he didn't put... I thought he boxed very well against Nicky Holskin before George Groves but he got a stick for that but he went in and performed against George Groves you can't win all the time sometimes you've got to win by any means necessary as long as you get the win just like football we all I mean United fans loved United to be United years ago where we got three against us but we won four by four three or five three but then you have a different type of team where Mourinho was just one nil and same with boxing Nicky Holskin after round nine Al Cam Smith said to me I'm bored just let me go out and put it on him and I said no you're not bored you get an elbow off this kickboxer in, a cut, you're out of that final. You go out there and jab, jab, and jab, jab, ball your way to 12. And he set a world record for uh, world, in a world title fight, so he it for the most jabs thrown. So sometimes you have to 
get your way through fights. And for this one now, it's Canelo. It's like stick or bust. This is it now, son. This is this is it. You're the best 168 pound fighter in the world, number one, um, with the Ring magazine, everything else, and you're going up against the pound for pound one. It just doesn't get no bigger than this. This is it, and uh, there's no second chances. You've got to go in there and do this. And I usually believe Sunday morning, uh, December the 20th, we'll have the number one pound for pound fighter in the world from the UK. Well, if you're, if you're not excited about the fight, then you have to be after, after listening to that. Joe, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. And all the best no in the fight. Cheers. Thank you.